Hey, Staten Island. This is Health Wish, a conversation about the state of healthcare in the fabulous fifth borough. Our aim is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health. Because when we raise health, we raise everyone. Today, from the majestic St. George Theater, we are privileged to share the big stage with one of Staten Island's favorite sons, Mr. Clifford Smith Jr., better known to his legion of fans as Method Man. We asked Cliff about his Staten Island roots, how his career continues to push new boundaries, and even about his hilarious SNL bit with the king of Staten Island, Pete Davidson. Give a listen. Hey, Staten Island, I'm here at the majestic St. George Theater, meeting with two truly exceptional people that have been instrumental in some of the things that we've been able to do with this community over the last several years. I have Claudette Hill, who is our Director of Community Health, and she has really done amazing work in connecting with our community and starting some really key programs that you're going to hear about uh, that have allowed us to really expand our community health reach. And somebody who really doesn't need much of an introduction, Mr. Cliff Smith, who I think most of the world knows as... Method Man and has really done some truly outstanding work on Staten Island, and we really want to take an opportunity to talk to him about some of that work. Philanthropic work. (laughs) So I just want to start with a thank you, uh, and kind of, you know, you're an original Staten Islander, right? I mean, you are somebody who, while you've, you know, been in different places in your life, has never really forgotten where you're from, and you're still here. Yeah. And I guess I would just start there and say, why are you still here? Well, family first and foremost is here. Plus, Staten Island is the root of um, where my career really started or my interest in music professionally really started. So, you know, when you stay grounded, you tend to last a bit longer in the business. People like when you're grounded, so it's good for me to be here. And I have to admit, so it's one of these things where I have been a fan for a very long time. I was saying to you earlier that I was at one of your original Rage yeah, yeah. concerts. <laughs> uh, I was I went to the tour when you were touring with Rage Against the Machine. I was actually a yeah. fan of both bands. What I'd ask you is, you've seen a lot, and you've watched the industry that you started out in undergo such like metamorphic change. Yeah, but that's evolution. That's how evolution is. You know, um, being a doctor, you know all about evolution. The music business is always changing, and the people that dictate the business. Um, you would think it would be the record execs, the older people, you know, the OGs, but no, it's the younger generation, the fans. They dictate the fashion, the, uh, the music, just everything about pop culture. They have their thumbprint on it. And I mean, you know, as the music business evolved, a lot of the old guard had to adjust to the way things were done now, especially with the streaming and things of that nature. How do we monetize this and monetize that? And you know, these new superstars were coming out, but they weren't signed to these labels. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a double-edged sword because in, in the same breath, you have a lot of the old guard that um, didn't get their just due as artists when they were relevant, so to speak. And now it's like, as far as getting their royalties and things of that nature, it's hard to get streams when you don't own your music. And so, yeah, it's a lot of things that go. So it's funny that you say that. I, I rewatched the documentary, uh, and I thought it was fascinating. And a lot's been made over the years about the genesis of Wu-Tang Clan and kind of how that whole thing played out. You know, if you look at where you guys were and how that started, I don't think any of it's all that surprising. You've got a situation where, for the first time, you had artists that were actually able to stand up for themselves and express themselves and also hold out for themselves. So I almost feel like it was kind of bound to happen that there was going to be all these I- issues and stuff because you were the first wave of, listen, we, ha- we have the ability to protect ourselves. Where right. prior to you, artists didn't have that ability. Well, it's strength in numbers. You know, we came in as eight individuals or nine individuals and um, basically changed the game. And I think for the better, the, the thing that we had in our favor was the fact that there was experience from RZA and Jizza having their own you know, record deals prior to that. So they, they, they seem to see a bit of the ins and outs of the industry, mostly the, the pitfalls of it. And they took that knowledge and applied it to us. Now, as far as talent goes, New York as a whole has a, an abundance of talent. I mean, Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn. Captain America is from Brooklyn, <laughs> all right? Um, but with that being said, it's like, like you said, it, w- it was bound to happen. It was just, it just took a little bit more time for the forgotten borough, which I like to call Staten Island sometimes, to get put on. And it was great that 
when we did get represented, we were represented right from the gate. Force MDs, UMCs, King Just, and ourselves. So, you know, the talent has always been there. It was just the mind state. So I got to ask one fanboy thing. You own one of the most well-known rap hooks ever. So yeah. I've actually played Cream for my 12-year-old son and played it and then stopped it right before the riff. And I'm like, what goes next? And my 12-year-old kid says, cash rules everything around me. Uh, Cream, get the money, dollar, 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 dollar billion. billion. <laughs> yes. and, and, you know, he's a kid, and yet he knows that. That's got to be a cool thing. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking about that with my nephew the other day how um, some of our biggest hits were based off the hooks. And I mean, the rhymes were great, but the hook, that, yeah. I mean, it's, that's exactly what it is. It hooks the fish mm -hmm. and it, it hooks people. And, you know, just that mind state that I was in at that point in time and, you know, knowing where we were at, it was uh, when your back's against the wall, you know, and, you, and you're fighting things off, there's nothing behind you. So everything's in front of you. So it's a little bit easier to stay focused. And we were so focused then and, to be on stage or to be in the street or to watch certain comedy specials or comedians use the reference for cream, it's, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing because that came from a, a 22 year old mind, a kid. Sometimes the neatest things. Yeah. The littlest things go wind up something that lasts forever. You're right. So one of the most interesting things about your career is the fact that you were able to transition so incredibly well into so many different things. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, now you're doing so many things in, in the realm of acting in film. Wow. Thanks. It, it's an incredible career. Thank you. Um, and I, I'm just curious, like that transition, you made it so natural. Your, your thoughts on that? And how does one do that? Reinvent themselves? Ooh, man. It, um, you have to dedicate yourself to the work. Um, I know uh, a lot of people that came through the genre that I came through hip hop, you know, they've dabbled in the acting here and there. And um, they'll tell you themselves, it's not as easy as it looks. You have to do the work. So for me, it was a decision on what did I want to do? Do I want to do music or do I want to do acting? Because you cannot do both. Um, so I stuck with the, I, we, me and Red Man, we had our own movie, How High, of course, and we had a little TV show, but the music was still calling. And it was hard for me to accept roles or be on a set for three, four months and not be able to tour. So I had to choose. I picked the music. So for years, I wasn't doing any acting. Then when I decided to get back in it, the door wasn't as open as it was before. So I had to work my way to get back in that door, whether it was an independent film here, a walk on, a guest appearance here, a, uh, an appearance somewhere. It was, it was just, that was part of doing the work. I slept on my manager's couch for a month, uh, went on numerous auditions, uh, went to acting school, went to acting school, acting school, Ivana Chubbick, shout out to her. And um, through hard work, perseverance and dedication and luck, I got booked and I haven't looked back since then. But that speaks to the talent that comes from some of these urban areas, especially Staten Island, because I'm not the only person that has done this. Um, Michael Rainey Jr. sticks out, for instance. He's carrying his own show now, and he's been acting since he was a, a young kid. Uh, Tristan Wilds, Mac Wilds, um, brilliant mind, very focused young man, always been smart, got his just due when he did The Wired, and he drops an album which shows that he's a multi-talented guy, and now he's on Broadway doing Thoughts of a Black Man. And um, it's just great to see, like, People who I grew up with, not just them, but their children shining now. And I'd like to think I had a part of that, but we all know that talent trumps everything. So as far as my transition went, I'm just doing what came natural to me. So recently, I'm sitting at home and it's Saturday night and my phone blows up and says, your hospital's on Saturday Night Live. I thought it was, so of course, everyone sends me the video. It progressed. First, I got the shaking one of the person recording yeah. it, and then it progressed as I got the actual one as it got posted online. And of course, it was very clever. But to be honest, what I wanted to ask you about is, first of all, whoever decided to have you say, I'm Italian tonight, that is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So whoever's idea that was, yeah. that was priceless. But did you take a step back and realize that you've become synonymous with Staten Island? Which is really cool. Um, well, that's what I wanted in the beginning when we first started anyway, based off the fact that Staten Island, the Forgotten Borough, and any time 
we went over into the city and it was, you know, that, that roll call. It's Brooklyn in the house, Queens in the house. Gotcha. I mean, they would get to Connecticut, Jersey. Mm -hmm. No Staten Island whatsoever. So for me, it was always about repping where I was from and, and as well as Long Island, but repping Staten Island first and foremost to the fullest. And I mean, at the end of the day, you become royalty in a small community and that's the best thing in the world right there. Man. That was cool. <laughs> a, a bunch of guys Super decided cool. to get somebody to represent Staten Island and they uh, called you. Yeah, and they I called think me. that's really cool. Well, me and Pete that. have like a little relationship. I think we're both like a little crazy, so to speak, but in a good way, in a, in a great way. Pete's a great guy and I was honored that he even called me. It was pretty great. Appreciate that. So you brought up a really interesting point. Do you think the fact that you had to work at it because you actually had to earn it the second time made you better in the end? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't lie. Um, the, the Method Man name in the music business, I, I cut the line in a lot of things, and um, including acting. And was I ready? Sometimes I was, sometimes I wasn't because no one had to, I, I didn't have to walk the same pathway as some of these hardworking actors that you, you see today. But that path that I took in order to get back showed me that you have to trust the process. And if you, and, and no one's gonna believe in you more than you believe in yourself. If you cannot believe in yourself, you're not gonna go far at all. If you can't look in that mirror and say, I believe in you and you're gonna make it, it's never gonna happen for you at all. And even when you feel at your last, you know, bit of hope and, and, and you find it hard to even look in that mirror and love yourself, still do it because you never know. You never know. You have to be your biggest fan first and then everybody else will follow suit. It's hard to think you're gonna get somewhere if you don't believe you're gonna get there. Yeah, this is true, this is true. It doesn't I mean, matter what that is. Even in the medical field, correct? 100%, it's yeah. actually, um, listen, to excel in any field, I think, and to, you have to believe that you can do it, and I think that's one of the messages that we try to preach to young people, is like, listen, you know, you can be an inspiration to the person, the next person down the line, but you can't be an inspiration to the next person if you're not an inspiration to yourself. to yourself. Indeed, indeed, and that, that brings right. me to my sister Claudette because Honestly, I've always wanted to do some kind of um, charitable work, something that gave back to the people that gave to me and gave so much to me. And I feel like she came like a, an angel, for lack of a better phrase, angel in disguise. Mm -hmm. And um, she's given that, that itch in me some kind of purpose. And when I visited the young man, Bryson, um, super duper moved. And it, it kind of, it's kind of like uh, an eye opener where it's like, you s people want to do and be good people. I mean, we, we practice it in our roles all the time. I mean, our overall objective is to win. Whatever our, our objective is, we want to win that. And we'll do anything to get to that objective. And to see someone is dedicated to giving so much of themselves to others, it's just, you, you can't put anything on that, you know? It, it, you can tell that that's um, genuine. And that's where we'll pick up next time, as Claudette shares how the Day of Surprises initiative began at the hospital, how Method Man got involved, and how a very ill young man named Bryson inspired and changed the lives of those around him. Healthwish wishes to thank our very special guests, Clifford Method Man Smith Jr. and Administrative Director of Community Health, Claudette Hill. Thanks for watching Health Wish. We hope to see you again soon.